Pedro, uh, Scott Merkin, and MobyNet.com. How was, how was day one for you? Was it different than you expected? Or just, I know you had other spring, many other spring trainings, but as the manager now. Yeah, you know what? It, um, I was pleased with day one. The energy was high. Uh, we had good, good meetings as a staff early on uh, to set up the day. Uh, we went through all our fundamentals and how we're going to teach them. And the guys went out there and did a nice job and executed what we wanted them to do. We talked to Rick and we just talked to Mike about his situation. I know there's not a lot you can say about, but how does that situation affect you and your planning and your staff and that kind of thing? Oh, not at all. Um, I mean, we got to, we got to prepare for a major league baseball season. So, um, you know, for us, it's, it's, making sure that we execute what we had planned for today. And I thought we did that. You made it's obviously very lucky that Mike was. Like, how, how do you make sure that it doesn't become a, sorry, I'm Dion. Yeah, uh, so how do you make sure that he do, it doesn't become a distraction for both him and your team? I don't think it's going to be a distraction. Um, you know, obviously he, he spoke to the club and, you know, we'll leave that in there in the clubhouse. Uh, but, uh, you know, we got some veteran players here that I think, uh, you know, we'll do a good job, you know, handling any distraction that can come our way. Pedro uh, Vinny Duber with CHGO. Uh, you said you leave it in the clubhouse. What he said. What was the reaction? Was it a, what sort of uh, vibe did you get from the guys after Mike spoke? I don't know the reaction that that uh, that they had. All I know is that they came out on the field and with high energy. Um, and like I said, I'm I'm, I'm kind of repeating myself, but they executed the plan for today, which was, you know, the guys that were throwing did a nice job with their bullpens. And the P PFPs, which is a big deal for me, um, you know, they went out there with high energy. James Seagan from the Athletic, uh, did you view it as important for, for Mike to address the team on the first day? Absolutely. It was important for him. It was important for the team, the organization. Um, you know, of course. Are you planning going forward on as far as uh, his presence on the team as, as far as him being part of the rotation from opening? Yeah, I mean, we, we signed him to be a part of the rotation, and he, he's here in camp, and and. You know, he's working to, you know, to be a part of it, a big part of it. You laid out uh, back in November that you, know, you had some pretty specific ideas on, on what you wanted this team's identity to be. And what was your message like today? And, and what kind of uh, things can fans expect to see these guys work on that uh, over the course of the next month? You know, that, that's a good question because uh, today we addressed that in that club, in the clubhouse and uh, the expectations and the identity. And what, we're, what, we, what we went through today is that we're, we're going to focus on the next 10 days. Um, which is primarily getting these pitchers and catchers ready. Um, and our expectations was to ramp up the energy in the, in the margins. You know, we're, we're, we're attacking margins, right? And I think every pitcher in the offseason um, prepares for their delivery, prepares for higher spin rate, velocity, better shapes on breaking balls. Um, you know, but like I told them in there, I said, we need to come out here and attack – the running game, attack our PFPs, uh, and make, make making sure that we don't give up 90 feet. And it starts today, and now we got to stay consistent with it. Pedro, uh, Marshall here, CBS Chicago. Just curious, uh, your your approach. You talk about starting things today, but how quickly do you kind of accelerate the, what your plan is and get everything installed in these players? You know, the good thing is uh, that you know back in the day, guys would come to spring training to get in shape. Um, guys now come to spring training in shape so um, these guys ramped it up pretty good out there today I was pretty happy with the um, the intensity um, and the effort that that they gave and uh, they were they were pretty much game speed I just finished seeing a PFP session with uh, Jose Ruiz and Tanner Banks and they were they were pretty much game speed Rick was asked about bullpen you know, it's a little too early to uh, to really get into specifics on that. Um, the good thing is that we have uh, a number of guys that can pitch late leverage. Um, and if everything stays the same uh, as of today, uh, we're just going to leverage pitchers and leverage situations. And I've spoken to a few of them, but... Um, I'm not going to get too deep into that right now because you know we haven't even played one game in the in the spring. But um, the good thing is the makeup of this bullpen is that we have guys with experience um, that we feel that you know can certainly pitch seventh, eighth, and ninth inning.
Pedro, Chuck Garfine, NBC Sports Chicago. You mentioned one of the guys to come out here and attack even in practice PFP is day one. Why is that important to you and the message you wanted to send? Well, the more we practice games closer to game speed, the better it is. Um, you know, this game really speeds up um, at 7.10 or 1.10 or whatever time we play. It really speeds up. So the more we can you know, try to ramp ramp this up and get it closer to game speed. It's really important. The throws are different. The footwork's different. So um, that's what we're going to be looking to do this camp and, and stay consistent with it and throughout the season. Paul Sullivan, Chicago Tribune. Um, do you have any contingency plan in case Mike is not available? Do you have to, like, use some of the other guys as possible starters down the road? Um, he's available right now. And, and if uh, – by any chance that he's not available, we'll we'll discuss that as an organization and, and address it then. But uh, right now, you know, he's a part of this rotation and we're moving forward with it. Rick uh, talked about Romeo Gonzalez's offseason. So you're able to see a little bit of that. Not a minute, just, how do you kind of look at the second base job and, and his kind of spot in that? Uh, that There's some good competition there. Romy had a good offseason. Um, he looks really good. Um, obviously, Sosa, you know, is a, is, a, is a pretty good player. Larry Garcia's got some experience there. I'm looking forward to the competition at second base. Um, but I can tell you that Romy, he's been here for about a week, and and uh, he, he really looks good right now. He's strong, and, and he's getting some good work in defensively. You view it as kind of a spring competition. It's it's uh, it's it's a competition. It's it's open for whoever wants it. Eloy's talked about uh, wanting to play outfield more than uh, I guess. Many of us thought he would. Uh, have you talked to him, and will he get that chance? I've spoken to him a few times, and I want Eloy to come to spring training and be ready to play the outfield. Uh, it doesn't mean he's going to, you know, and it doesn't mean that he might, you know, play two times a week, three times a week. I'm not sure. Um, but I, what I don't want is him coming to spring training and all of a sudden we say you're our dh and that's it that's all you're working on no he's got to he's got to be prepared to play the outfield he's got to stay athletic um you know he's got ability so we're going to play that by ear you know if we need him to play the outfield he'll be ready to play the outfield if not he'll be our dh good thank you thank you guys appreciate it